Hey, welcome back to Potentially Genius, where we at Tomorrow Lab use our four-phase process in a race against the clock to turn a potentially genius idea into a potentially genius thing. So for this episode, we linked up with Judith Anderson, who is focused on health and safety for the country's largest flight attendance union. After we saw her mentioned in an LA Times article about fume events on airplanes, Basically, oil and hydraulic fluid get sucked into the cabin of planes and get everyone really sick. So we got in touch with Judith to see if we could help by designing a discrete air quality monitor for airplanes. Now that smoking has been banned for most airline flights, you would think the air passengers would breathe a bit easier, but not necessarily. In fact, the air quality may be worse in some cases. If you smell dirty socks on an average flight, you would think somebody next to me has taken off their shoes. You wouldn't think, ah, the carboxylic acids and the engine oil fumes sourced to the compressor bleeder. You wouldn't think that. Um, and so there's an issue with crews and passengers not being informed. How often does something like this happen? Um, or is the whole point that we don't know how often it's happened? On the U.S. fleet over a 10-year period, there were um, an average of five or so fume events involving oil or hydraulic fluid per day on the U.S. fleet. Right, um, our recreating the device is gonna be monitoring over a bunch of flights so that we can have better test results and know that there is an issue better, or is it, hey, this is an emergency, you need to land the plane now kind of situation. What I had envisioned was something like, I smell something coming from the air supply vents, I'm gonna activate my sensor to find out later or in real time what it is that I'm being exposed to. There's a toxicologist at the University of British Columbia named Chris Van Netten, and he patented, designed and patented this Van Netten sampler. I have one here. Um, and it's, you can see it's about the size of a can of tomato paste and you twist it, um, which activates a battery powered fan, which pulls air across a filter in the top of the sensor. Um, and then you twist it again to seal the filter and then the filter is sent to a lab for analysis. It sounds like the ideal sensor technology is already out there. Like ideally you would just put one of these like on the airplane itself. But the problem is not that the technology isn't figured out. The problem is mostly re like resistance to um, any kind of regulation. And currently it sounds like there isn't even, there aren't even carbon monoxide sensors on airplanes. So from our perspective, it sounds to me like if we can just get like even the simplest of sensors um, widely distributed on an airplane in a, in a form factor that is possible to carry discreetly or easily, then we're providing enough data to maybe start tackling the problem. So design-wise, it has to be a really slick consumer device. It has to be reasonably discreet in case someone wants to carry it without being seen, but like attractive and confidence inspiring too, right? Like I'm bringing this along and I wanna know that it's it's gonna work. Who wants to work on it? I'll make the things. All right. Yep. Ted, like Joe, Jesse, and Jing Wen. Sweet. Three J's and a T. Hey, Jing Wen. Hey, Ted. Boy, it's been a really busy week, but wanted to go through technical electronics for this airline air safety device. Where should we start? So we know after speaking with Judith, there's a number of chemicals that she's identified as like culprits or sort of like, what are the dangerous chemicals within the aircraft? Carboxylic acids, tributylphosphates, tricresyl phosphates, and then formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and TVOCs. There's already several off the shelf sensors that measure directly those things. And what's cool about all of these is that individually, they're not tiny, but at least they're all portable and like handheld because one of our goals is to provide some direction to the industrial design team for you know how big of a product envelope they should work on. I wonder if we only need one sensor or it's like a combination of multiples in this device because right. if there is like one uh, particular uh, item that would always uh, we can always detect, then we can use that as like the signal particle and and we're good. So maybe we go back to Jesse and Joe with this and say, hey, we you know, we looked, we'd like to recommend the carbon monoxide along with like either them using the Van Netten sampler or like recreating our own version plus the CO or the mm -hmm. yeah, carbon monoxide. That sounds good. 
Let me look on DigiKey really quick. Here we go. Right, the CO sensor. It's seventy-five dollars from DigiKey, and yeah. um, it looks like they can ship immediately. Um, I saw the pin out, and it's uh, RX and TX. So you are, I can connect it to an Arduino and read it as a first step. Yay! Okay, <laughs> that's a great awesome. use of thirty minutes. All right, Ching Wen. Thank you. I'll follow up in Slack with uh, you, Jesse, and Joe. Yeah, sounds good. Goodbye. Okay, so this is the first idea, basically something tiny enough that it could take a number of form factors, but this contains just the notes. Uh, like a really basic sensor set, probably just carbon monoxide. Uh, going back to the, uh, what Ching Wen and I were kind of um, recommending based on the Van Den paper, they were saying that carbon monoxide is the biggest and most important yes. clue. Yes. Then, Joe, do you want to share? Yeah, I want to show the last one. Uh, the idea here is to have it all contained in one device. So uh, toward the tier, the, the thinner end of the tier drop shape is where you would have the board uh, with a window cut out in the housing uh, for the nose. Now that Jing Wen has shown how much of that surface area needs to be open, I think we just changed the pattern for that window. With this one, my thought is to lean toward a light instead of a, a definitely not a beep, we don't want to panic people, but a light to grab attention and then an intentional flicking. Jesse and I had also discussed whether or not a, a vibration motor would help like what is not obvious, but we'll still call attention. Yeah. We need to narrow it down to one. Do we want to? Do we want to offer all these to Judith and then have her choose? Honestly, yeah. Because um, I think that we don't know enough about this. Like in a real design scope, we'd be able to do some more research. Um, but she she knows so much about this problem. She might be able to point us in the direction. So, Sweet. Hi, welcome to my desk. Jing Wen has given me this CO sensor, which I've uh, already taken some measurements of. So I've already got the uh, CO sensor and this battery here modeled in, and I'm gonna try and build this package out around it. Let's go. This is the basic outline of the, of the uh, sensor package. It has a nice clip on the back, which you could use to clip it to um, a uniform. This could also be taken off and could be used uh, to connect to, say, a watch band mount. At the top is this lens, which an LED notification would, would show through. And on the side is a switch for power in airplane mode. This carbon monoxide sensor right here, and the battery here, and those fit. And everything else is just kind of sketched out for now. But I think this is totally plausible and might be nice to use. I'm excited to see how it looks in a rendering and a 3D print. Okay, just you can see that there are more considerations in this refined model as far as how someone is going to interact with it. We integrated where the USB-C uh, charging port was going to be. There's now this cap on the bottom uh, that starts to suggest how it's going to be twisted and opened so that the filter is removed at the lab that it's gonna be sent to. And possibly a new filter can be put back in, sealed up, the device is refurbished and that gets sent back out. This way we can reduce the amount of waste uh, that comes from this testing device. And on the back, we retain the clip so that this can be worn on a piece of clothing and the knob uh, is still the same so that it can rotate uh, into the open position. So in T-Shirt, we started thinking about what some of the materials were gonna be for this device. I know I wanted the uh, bottom plate and the clip to be the same kind of aluminum. The grill is going to be probably painted to color match the slight gray difference of the knob uh, from the housing. And we have small moments for uh, color reveals and this banding shoots out from where the grill is and it involves the pill shape of the slider switch. And we can bring that color match to a small notice here on the uh, knob, the knob's post. Uh, that's it for now we're going to set up the printer and I'll record some of that. Okay, so after a series of failed prints resulting in spaghetti and half printed forms, we got this boy.
All right. Hey, Judith, how are you doing? Hi, really good. This is exciting. So in our research, we found that carbon monoxide is one of the first chemicals that we can detect during a fume event. So what we did is we combined a carbon monoxide sensor with the Van Netten sampler technology that you brought us. And the thinking there is that we can offer instant detection of the fume event with the carbon monoxide sensor and then allow the unit to be sent to a lab for later analysis of the Van Netten filter. So the, this is a sensor that we spec that is in a comparatively small size and takes m much less footprint than some other type of uh, sensor that sends other types of uh, particles. That gave us a basis to kind of think further into what the product could be. So we have a bunch of stuff to show you today. So this is sort of the first idea, which is the, the bare minimum of sensing in the smallest possible package. Yeah. Uh, styled kind of like, um, like a, it, it could clip on in a, to a jacket or it could be worn like a fitness watch band. Mm -hmm. um, it has the sensing, it has a pretty subtle LED notification at the top and uh, a switch to put it into airplane mode and turn it on. This sensor um, could use some low energy Bluetooth communication. It's sampling really infrequently. So the power consumption is low um, and it could communicate with the phone when not in airplane mode. Mm, that's really cool. Yeah, it looks like a little air cleaning device or something. Yeah, it's, it's inconspicuous, but also yeah. kind of nice. That's really, really good. More inconspicuous, but it's not a neon orange, but yeah. that's what we have the renderings for. So Joe, uh, is going to talk about what a more integrated solution might look like. So uh, the concept that this direction is building on is trying to integrate both a Van Netten sensor and yeah. the components that Jesse has already gone through. So mm -hmm. how do we have our nose with some kind of notification for the user to turn on the fan all in one body? So the idea here is that we have the uh, sensor along that broad face uh, mm -hmm. beneath the vent uh, when that notices that the carbon monoxide levels are high, a light goes off and shines through this uh, clear uh, knob and that is used as a lens to flash, but not beep, so trying to call attention. I see, uh, yeah. Along the side, we have that uh, LED shooting into the knob. And you uh -huh. can see here from the pattern of the holes, uh, they're not aligned, so the vents are closed. And then when you notch it forward, the light turns off and the vents are open and the fan is turned on and it's pulling air into the filter to capture. We yeah. have this uh, twist lock mechanism to get access to the filter. Oh. Uh, this would not be accessed by the user. The whole device would get sent to a lab, a lab that you partner with would be able to extract the filter and then the device can be refurbished and sent back out. It's really cool. It is larger uh, than what Jesse was having, but I don't think it's too large to no, uh, have it's clipped large. onto yourself. Yeah. Um, nice little handheld. Size. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's then, really nice. I really admire the um, just like the sleek, sophisticated um, design of the that, that you came up with, and the combination of the carbon monoxide and the filter. And okay, so, would you say this is a potentially genius idea? Oh, it's totally a potentially genius idea. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I didn't know what to expect because I feel like I gave you a potentially impossible problem. Based on the information that I sent you, I mean, this is not a new issue. It just hasn't been solved. Um, so I really do think that there's a market for it. Um, and it's been really fun to watch you work together as a team to, um, to come up with a solution. Hey. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to our guest. Thanks so much to DigiKey for sponsoring this. Listen, if you guys have potentially genius ideas, not your big idea, but just like a fun idea or something that you wanna see us make, put it in the comments. We're gonna be reading them. We're gonna be looking for likes, upvotes, or whatever you kids call it. And the ones that like get the most traction, we might actually bring onto the show. We'll reach out to you. You get to be a guest and we'll build the thing that's in your head. That's our job. Also. If you have any thoughts about our process, comments, criticisms, we don't care, tell us down below. Yeah, and if you wanna see more of our work, go over to tomorrow-lab.com uh, or you can find us on Instagram. Thanks again. Bye.